Hello, my name is Carlos Urban and today I'm going to show you how to get started with Nikon's wireless system. Uh, basically what I did is a, a two speed light setup uh, and once again the intent is just to get you up and running for those people that haven't been able to, to do the wireless system for, for Nikon yet. So in this particular picture what I'm showing you is basically the as you can see there is two flashes and then there is a, here instead of a model I have a, what is called a calibration target and this comes very useful when you're trying to measure the proper exposure um, of the subject. Now uh, and uh, but the main uh, uh, you know the main purpose of, of these pictures was just to show you how I place the two flashes. I really didn't uh, do too much uh, of a setup in terms of the position of the flashes and all that because the intent of this video is just to get you to uh, to use the flashes wireless and what you need to do. So the first thing you need to do is you go to your camera and you need to look for the bracketing and flash sub menu in the custom menu uh, section. In this particular camera which is a D800 is you can find it in the E section and it's under E3. Um, it, it may be different in your camera but if your camera has a pop-up flash uh, it should have this bracketing and flash function. Then when you go in there what you're gonna find is there is three uh, uh, three different options TTL, manual, repeating flash. The first three are really for the pop up flash, so you really want to go to CMD, which is the commander mode. The commander mode is what is going to allow you to uh, control your speed lights. Once you are in the commander mode, then you basically have uh, the built in flash, and uh, then you have the mode, and it has the compensation. Uh, Right now, the mode for the pop-up flash has these two little dashes, which means it's not going to flash. The, I just want the pop-up flash to control my group A and group B, which are my other two flashes. So in this particular case, uh, group A is going to be one flash and group B is going to be the, the second flash. This video is for TTL. I'm going to do a separate video for manual because in manual uh, it's recommended that you use a light meter but then if you don't have a light meter the calibration tool also comes very handy and there is some advantages to shooting manual and some advantages to shooting TTL I shoot TTL mostly when subjects are moving uh, like events and I shoot manual typically when I'm doing uh, you know a shot of a model that is stationary or doesn't move as much and it's, it's, it's very practical. It's, it's much better to do it in manual because you have full control. But anyway, this video is not intended to compare manual versus TTL because that's a whole different subject. Is to get you started with wireless flash. Okay? So basically, this is what you have to do in the camera. That's it. You pop up your flash and do these settings. Then when you go to your flash, okay, uh, this is the SB910, which is identical to the SB900. Uh, the SB700 is also very similar, and the SB800, even though it looks different, is relatively simple as well. The only thing you need to do is go to the menu and then find the remote, um, you know, the remote section. I used to have an SB800, but I don't have it anymore, so. Uh, I cannot show it to you on the SB800, but it's basically very simple. You, you'll find it very easily. So the first thing you need to do is put it on remote. As we talked about before, okay, this particular flash, see here, so I'm, I'm basically controlling right now group A, which is one flash. By the way, you can have more than one flash in one group. Group A typically is what I use as the main light. So, you know, let's assume that this is my main light. And in this particular case is group A, channel 1. The zoom in this particular case, you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, if you're shooting a wide shot, you want to have it uh, like 24 millimeters. If you want it more concentrated, you can go higher. That's a whole different subject that I don't want to get into right now. 
but that this you have this option to change the zoom as well. So when you put in a remote, you really don't have a lot of functions because you basically have the group, you have the channel, and the zoom. Those are the only things you can change. And to change, you press the middle button, and then you can scroll up and down and press OK. So this is what you need to do for this particular flash. The other flash is the same thing. The only difference is we're going to put it in group B. That way you have the flexibility if you want, uh, you know, one flash. Let's say your this is your main flash, right? So you want a different light than your group B, which is, let's say, your... So this is your main... Well, here I have both at plus one. But it could be that group A is plus one and group B is zero or even neg uh, minus one, depending what you like, depending how you want to create shadows or, or, or whatever you want to do. As a matter of fact, you can even have group A on TTL and group B on manual. So you can do all those different things and that could be useful if you know you, you know that the B is, let's say you're using it to light the background and you want it blown out. Well, if you're lighting the background, you probably just want it on one setting. You don't want it to be changing up and down because that's really not what you're exposing for. You're exposing for the subject which is, let's say in this particular case, your main light. But this is a very simple setup. I'm just putting one on each side, and I'm doing it with on purpose against a bright background, because here you're going to see the advantages of, um, of the speed light, particularly when we go to high speed sync. So when I took this picture, as you can see the settings, uh, one hundredth of a second is um, you know F8, ISO 400, I was really taking a picture of the setup, but you can see in this particular case that even though the flash properly exposed my subject, in this particular case is the calibration target, my background is blown out, particularly the sky. And I, you know, for the, uh, you know, my style, I would like to be able to show the sky, especially if it's a beautiful sky. So the first thing that I do if I want to achieve that is I shoot the background and try to get an exposure for the background. In this particular case uh, is 200 of a second F9 ISO 200. I was doing 200 of a second because usually if I'm not doing high speed sync I try to go to my camera sync speed. Each camera has a different sync speed but it's usually uh, for Nikon it's usually 200 of a second or 250 of a second. That's when you're not shooting in high speed sync, which we'll talk in a second. Uh, I had it at ISO 200, which is the native ISO for most cameras, and uh, I needed to just adjust the, uh, the, temp uh, not the temperature, the aperture slightly uh, so that I could get a proper exposure. Uh, in this particular case, because I'm dealing with the background, and by the way, I have the flash turn, so, uh, turn off, because the, the flash could affect maybe the terrace here, but it's not going to obviously have an effect on the sky and on the ocean. So then the next thing that I do, because okay, so I have the exposure for the background, is really to get an exposure for my subject. In this particular case, what I'm doing is I'm taking a shot of this um, calibration target. So the way it works is you take a shot of the calibration target, okay? Uh, this helps you for two things. First, the white balance. And here you can see that it's a little bit underexposed. You have your blacks or shadows, you have your midtones, and you have your highlights, okay? Now you can see it's a little bit underexposed. If I move it here, so it's about, you know, uh, two thirds of a stop underexposed. Uh, you want this. This one is you want it to be a little bit. We call it uh, exposing to the right. So you want it to be slightly to the right. You don't want it to be uh, perfectly. You know. So thi this would be probably the ideal exposure. So it's uh, it's about one stop underexposed. Okay. Uh, you can look you can see this in your camera when you look at the histogram you're going to see something like this uh, so i made an adjustment so i went up by a stop in this particular case i went up by a stop um, and you can see that it's very close 
to what I had in the previous one where you can see a stock difference. So, you know, I was doing this relatively quickly, so this for me was good enough to say that this is a properly exposed. Notice that my settings for the camera haven't changed. The same settings that I had here, 200 of a second, F9, ISO 200 is the same here because now I'm using my flash as a field light to get my subject properly exposed, but the background is already uh, done. So when I take my picture, right, I have now a beautiful sky, a beautiful background with the sky and everything exposed, and I have a proper exposure for my um, proper exposure for my subject. In this case, you can tell I should have put the flashes at an angle, then because when you have glass, obviously it's going to to reflect off the glass, but Again, the idea here was, is to show you how to get up and running real quick. So let's talk now a little bit high-speed sync. High-speed sync is used so that you can uh, um, shoot at a much uh, wider aperture when you want to specially blur the background, for example. So in this particular case, uh, no, the, I'm sorry, I was shooting the camera. So. What the first thing you need to do is you need to go to your flash speed sync settings and you need to put it either at 1 3 20th or 2 50th of a second. 2 50th of a second is what I chose because this allows me to also work with the pocket wizards. But if you don't have pocket wizards, you can do either one. I really haven't seen a difference between the two. So I shoot the background and what you will see in this particular case, when I put it on 1.8 to get a proper exposure, I would have to go to 4 thousandths of a second. Now, when you go to that high of a shutter speed, then you're, you're basically going to high speed sync. And, you know, I took several shots to get my proper exposure, the same, um, the same procedure that I, saw you, I showed you last time. There is no difference in this, okay? And this was an exposure that I was happy with. And when I got to this exposure and I took is this blurry? Well, anyway, uh, and I got the the exposure that I wanted. This is the result, and as you can see, is giving me the you know blurry background. In this particular case, I really didn't care about showing the sky or anything. I just wanted this is what I wanted. I wanted a perfectly sharp subject, and I wanted a a blur back. This thing is bothering me so much. Sorry. The so anyway, the the point is that. I, this is the result you get with high speed sync okay actually when this shot and then it becomes a matter of taste uh, even though it's properly exposed based on the histogram i actually like it a little bit less so i went down a little bit and you know here i think i, I was 17 uh, 1.7 or, or 1.3 over the ttl and then here i I dialed it down a little bit, so I ended up going at one plus one and plus one over TTL. So this is a basic explanation to get you up and running with your wireless flash for Nikon. I hope you enjoyed the video. There is going to be more videos on this when I uh, have a model and I'll do some with the body fires and soft boxes and all the toys that I have. But for now, I just wanted to get you up and running so uh, you can start playing with your wireless flash if you don't have stands you can even put it on the you know the the little holder that comes with the flash and start playing with it the bottom line is you just feel comfortable with using the wireless mode uh, and, and, and then this is really a super advantage that you have because the last thing you want to do is to take pictures with a flash on your camera. That's uh, the most uh, unflattering light that you, you could have on a subject and the advantages of your speed light is that you'll be able to get it off camera and put it in different positions and then be very creative and get the desired results. Thank you very much.